Hello. Hi everyone. So today we are here to figure out a recipe for the game Sea of Darkness, in which Nancy gets to assemble these lovely little trays that aren't actually quite so lovely. We took a little time, looked up a few of the ingredients, and realized that most of these items, we are um, not gonna have the ingredients to get our hands on, or the desire. She's been having some very bitter feelings about this. So anyway, today we will be tackling one of the items from the trays that is actually pretty simple to make. So for today, I'm gonna really try to pronounce this correctly again. We are going to be showing you how to make harfisker in a simplified manner because we do not have the time to set this out all winter to dry. So we're gonna show you how to do it in an oven. So basically what we're making today is dried fish. That's all it is. Super easy. And if you like fish, which I do, you will enjoy it. If you don't like fish, uh, it might be time to go ahead and move on to another video because, <laughs> anyway, let's get to it. First things first is you're gonna need to figure out your fish. We did look up some different links and videos and whatnot online and looks like the best recommendations for making this yourself are using haddock, flounder, or cod. I had some cod on hand, so we're gonna be using cod. We're just gonna do a small amount. We have two cod fillets in here and we're gonna take those and try to cut it up a little bit more thinly because since we're trying to dry this in the course of a day in the oven, the thinner our fish is sliced, the faster the process is going to be. Yes. So let's go ahead and do that, okay? Okay. And this would probably be a little bit easier to do if it was um, still half frozen uh -huh. when you do it. So once your fish is mutilated, once your fish is as nice and thin as you can get it, you're gonna take a bowl with four cups of water and you're gonna add about three and a half or so teaspoons of salt to that to create a nice ocean water level of saltiness. And we're gonna stir that up to dissolve the salt. So now we're gonna take our fish and put it in our salt water and we don't want it to get super salty so we're gonna leave it in there for no more than about a minute to a minute and a half. In the meanwhile, let's discuss our drying method in the oven. If you have a food dehydrator, by all means use it. That's how I tested the first batch. It did really well that way. However, I understand not everyone's gonna have a food dehydrator on hand. In which case, we're gonna be trying this oven method that we did find a very vague tutorial on YouTube for. So you're gonna get your oven preheated to its lowest setting. In our case, this is 200 degrees, but if your oven goes down to like 170, anywhere in like the 170 to 200 degree range, Go ahead and get that heated. You're gonna want it very low so that you don't cook your fish, you dry your fish. Then we have this wire rack with the little feet on it. We're gonna put that on our baking sheet and once our fish is done soaking, we're gonna put this on our wire rack so that it's raised up off the bottom so that it can circulate the air and dry on the underside as well. Anyway, it's been a minute, so now we're gonna go ahead and take a fish out of the bowl and put it on our wire rack. Now we're gonna pop these little pieces into the oven for however long it takes to dry. So we're gonna check this in about 30, 45 minutes and probably flip the pieces over to make sure they dry evenly. 
However, the tutorial that we did find recommended leaving the oven door cracked open. And if you have an oven fan, cut that on to get as much circulation in there as possible. I do not have an oven fan. We're settling in for the long haul now, so we're gonna watch this, but in the meantime, we're gonna get comfy because this is gonna take some time. And we'll be so, back while you wait. Go play some Nancy Drew. Yes. Anyway, we'll let y'all know when it's done how long this takes. A century. Who knows? It could be longer. Hi, we're back. It's many hours later. And we finally have finished drying our fish. We let it go in the oven for about five hours, which um, definitely ended up being more of a process when you have your oven going that long and you're trying to monitor it since you've got the door open. So just because that's not the simplest method, we are gonna go ahead and recommend for anyone who has access. If you have one yourself or you know someone who does, Get you a food dehydrator. Get your hands on one. This one um, I've had for ages. I use it to dry fruits, herbs, etc. I got it at Ollie's for $30. So it's not bad if you've been thinking about getting one in general and you just really, really, really want to try making your own jerky or whatnot. It makes life That's what so we're using here. Similar. Yeah. So this is what we're using. So we did go ahead and start a batch of that into the dehydrator, shot a little footage, which we will put here. As you can see, it's the same process, um, but we did have a wider cut of cod this time around because we ran out of the other, but honestly, I, this is gonna make a prettier piece when it's done because let's take a look at what we got when we finished the oven, shall we? This is the oven. Look at these little bits. The problem with the oven is that with the oven and not having an oven fan personally, to make sure that it dried evenly all the way out since it doesn't have circulation in there. We kept picking this up off the rack, flipping it over, putting it back down, and this leads to breaking apart and just like dog food. having these little tiny bits that are probably good for throwing in a bowl and snacking on if you decide you like the flavor, but it's not gonna be as pretty. However, it should have the same flavor. Expect this to be very hard. If you have like a metal mallet for pounding out meat or something at home definitely go ahead and beat this down to flatten it out a bit more if you have one because um and looking at some of the little how it's made videos available on the internet turns out they do actually often run the dried fish through machines to flatten it out so that it's not so thick and so hard but i'm gonna quit talking and try i mean it tastes like fish it tastes like the ocean to me. A little fishy. It's not salty. salty to me, but... It's got a little bit of a salt note to it, though. It's like the ocean if, the, if you didn't taste nothing but salt, I think. But it's not as scary of a flavor as you thought it would be. It's not, it's not too fishy. And you don't even really like fish that much, so... You just need a little bit of ASMR of you just crunching on your dried fish. Let me get right up on the mic. Sure. And a nice crispy bit. There you 
you go. I mean, we're already down to two pieces. This is something that you just, especially with it being smaller pieces like this, you've eaten it all up before you realize it. So, if you want a little to-go snack, mm -hmm. and you like fish well enough. Actually, some of the different, when I was reading up on it, some of the different people were saying this is actually like a really good food for if you're out hiking or something, something that's got a fair amount of nutrition to it, but that is lightweight non -perishable. and non-perishable. And you can just throw in your backpack, hike up a mountain, and just sit up there and eat your dried fish. So I might not be volunteering to cook an entire sheep's head in the next week or so, no. but we did at least try out one item from the tray. And it turned out very, very edible. We're taking a quick little detour here because we had finished a shooting and we realized, wait a second, we didn't actually sample our fish the truly authentic way like we were supposed to have done. So anyway, our dehydrator batch is done now. It looks a bit nicer. And we're gonna do it. What the internet says is the proper Icelandic way to try it, which is to take some butter, spread it on our fish, and give it a little taste. So let's do that real fast. Let's try this so with that's butter fish. How this is? Yes. Let's see which way we prefer it. <laughs> we still forgot to pound it out with a mallet. <laughs> Ow! Ah! So my immediate <laughs> observation on this is okay if up to this point in the video you would be like you've been like okay that's great and all but um i really hate the taste of fish i it does not taste fishy to me with butter on it it just tastes like butter and crunchy what about you is the fish flavor prevalent to you or is it just me i mean i can still taste a little fish so do you prefer it with or without butter without just because it's kind of like a layer of grease on top of your fish. If you like butter, definitely have it with butter. It doesn't, it's not a bad flavor. However, I also prefer it without because, like I said, it tastes like the ocean. I like the ocean. And buttered ocean just sounds like an odd flavor combo. So that's our comparison for it with butter. Now back to the regularly recorded video. Just as a bonus item, I was at the store getting groceries and look what I found. And this is another thing that when I was trying to find any link that I could on today's recipe, I did keep seeing the name Skeer popping up. Also assuming I pronounced that correctly. So, I thought we'd give us a little try and just do a little sampling of our Icelandic food while we're at it. Of course, this is probably, again, an Americanized version, but who knows, it might be decently authentic. yogurt it's not as sweet as normal fruit yogurt would mm -hmm. be which is nice honestly but it's also a lot more mellow than it's thick like a greek yogurt but it's not got quite so strong of a tang as greek mm -hmm. yogurt so it's a more mellow flavor so maybe not as aged which is a really nice level in between because i don't like how sweet most regular yogurts are i prefer greek yogurt mm -hmm. but sometimes you're really just tasting that tanginess this is actually a really really nice in between it is authentic or not this stuff is really good anyway that's it for today's food if you don't feel like cooking pour some fish in the dehydrator it's not well i mean i will not if you don't feel like cooking go out find yourself some of this if you have actually had authentic, let us know. Is this even remotely what it's supposed to taste like? Eventually, someday we'll make it to Iceland and try the real thing. And we're also going to order you a tray. Oh. That smile just have you left seen her face. the tray? Have you looked up these items? I do not want to eat them. You don't know, everything else could be surprisingly good once you actually tried it. Mm, yes, I'm sure I really want to eat a sheep's head. But anyways, we will see you next week for... For... Drum roll. The finale of our regularly scheduled programming. 
we will still continue to upload a few videos here and there after next week's video but it's not gonna be an every week thing it's gonna be more like oh you know what would be really good this week let's try this recipe from this game because I've always thought that looked tasty and let's just happen to film it while we're at it so it has been a, a lot lately to keep up with the filming every single week especially with daylight savings hitting and us being completely out of daylight by like five o'clock so yeah we're gonna we will still be uploading some but it'll be when we can where we can but we will be back next week with midnight in Salem so until then bye <laughs>